What's up, boy? <laughs> Another PewDiePie video. Now that's tough. <laughs> it's your boy So Illuminati here. Oh my god. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying. I can barely stand that dude. No, nah, really, this is a PewDiePie video. Re react to PewDiePie. Uh, what's his little thing? Uh, bro Army. What's up, bros? <laughs> Anyways, let's just check out PewDiePie's. Looking at my analytics. <laughs> How's it going, bros? My name is PewDiePie. And let's find out why my channel is dying. Google Trends, everyone. A wonderful it. tool that seems underutilized. Have you ever looked on Google Trends? Has anyone ever done this video before? Am I the first one? Oh my god, did I just have an original idea? That's awesome! A few days ago, me and Jack did a video where we looked a little bit into Google Trends. But I want to really dig deeper. I want to truly understand why everyone else is doing so <laughs> goddamn good and not me. So let's find out. Cool. <laughs> Maybe my channel's dying because I can't write it. PewDiePie. Oh my god. <laughs> well, it looks like I'm not the only one with this problem. <laughs> I like how we reacted to a PewDiePie video. Hi. <laughs> I die, Pew. Who the hell is Pi Dai Poo? Norwegian YouTuber Pi Dai Poo. He's my favorite. He's so funny. He's so good. All right, let's just go into this. So here we get an interest over time graph. Pretty interesting, I would say. You know, it's it's there. You don't really get the full picture unless you hit the whole graph. So let's start up here. In 2012, this Whoever is when I, I guess I started sure becoming more popular. I'm not exactly sure what date represent what, but I hit my peak at 2014. What happened in 2014? I need to understand. So, someone made a playlist. I guess I played games in 2014. He made videos for years, like, for sh like no breaks. That's crazy. Yeah, think about that. I, I need to have his philosophy. I'm gonna start doing a PewDiePie grind. <laughs> or any other channel's grind. Like, Ninja, he posts and stream every day. It's ridiculous. No but controversy? No nothing? Huh. I'm actually in the same room. <laughs> Nothing's changed. Five years. Jesus Christ. When did I become the biggest channel? In 2013. Damn, it's been a long time. It's 2013 and then I, I peaked in 2014. And then it all just, it all just went down. <laughs> I think it's interesting to note, at least for me, because anyone that came before me, almost every single channel that has been before me has just disappeared, okay? Everyone that's been bigger than me, they've all, they're all gone. Because of this fact, I've always just looked at YouTube like it could end at any day. Like I should just be ready to pack my dad back. Yeah, like Ray William Johnson was like a big YouTuber. Smosh is kind of like falling apart. Like so many channels are pretty much like they're gone. Like they don't even exist. He's the only channel that ever got big and like stayed, if that makes sense. Like every channel that was big, as soon as like, they felt like they weren't making money as much anymore or they were dying off. They didn't stick around to still make videos. Because what people don't understand is like, even if you're not getting a ton of views, you're still making some type of money at the end of the day. But people be like, well, my income went from 200K a year on YouTube to $18,000 a year. I mean, 18, yeah, $18,000 a year. Let's say that's the worst case scenario. Then people probably wouldn't want to do it as an income anymore. But to be honest, if you build something up and it still brings in the income and you like to do it, why not stick around? But a lot of YouTubers, I think, just left because of that. It's crazy, though. It, it just lets you know how many people willing to stay even when the money's not involved no more. You know, I don't think, personally, I don't think the OG YouTubers will ever leave YouTube as long as it existed. Because when they started, it was for fun. They didn't make money from it at least until a couple years into it because you couldn't even monetize videos at that point. YouTube wasn't like popular yet. So it's crazy bro how far they, these people have set the stage for you to even have the chance to do it. So 
It's kind of cool. Bags at any day. I actually. Oh wait, let me see if I can find that. Sorry, I'm, this is, video is just gonna be one giant tangent. So I did a. I think in 2012 I did a. I did a presentation. Do not Google it for the love of God. But I I found the pictures. <laughs> and I talked about you know doing let's plays as a job. People didn't really know anything about it at the time. Look here, I'm showing off my stats, being like, hey guys. It's going pretty well. <laughs> there was one information that I, I was really interested by. Sick of boring Let's Plays. I am your salvator. I found the press. If you think about it, though, because, okay, he did a presentation. So if you think about it, he's showing people how his YouTube stuff works because he's the first channel to really, one of the first YouTubers to kind of, like, understand what's going on with the platform. Like, you could be this person that's nothing start your channel make videos and find you an audience and you could just skyrocket out of nowhere it's like <clears throat> it just takes a lot of work it's kind of cool yeah presentation where is it beautiful, beautiful faces of horror okay, okay so how did i get to where i am full-time job so he tells you straight up right here this is what I, this is interesting because he said he works a full-time job makes two videos every day do something different lend myself into the game so you got to think about that. You're making two videos every day. He's got tons of watch time, tons of people he has the potential to get subs from. Like, the more you post, the more consistent you are every single day, the more, it's more about quantity than quality, which is sad on YouTube. Because if you're talented, you may make an animated video, but because this channel is producing more stuff for people to watch day to day, they, this person's going to make more, even if your shit is shitty. And theirs is great. Yeah. Quantity is over qual quality on YouTube. It's crazy. Now, he did a good job of having quality and quantity at the same time, or at least decent enough stuff to where it could be quantifiable and he can keep posting and it won't ever feel like he's dying. But, like, how many YouTubers can actually do that? Like, the people who vlog their life, there's only so much you can vlog about your life, and then it comes to a never end. But him, he chose gaming, which people don't always play video games, and he chose reacting to like videos, which people don't always make videos, and then three, reacting to memes, because everyone now is going to make memes all the time because of social media. So he chose three categories that will never run out of material. That's the smartest thing you can do, think about. And he said he did something different. He did. He was very quirky. He was, compared to all these esports gamers you see, they take the game very seriously. He's like a chill dude, plays the game. He's just funny and he's quirky and he has his own style. Of, he's very unique. So he, he used that to his event. It, it all makes sense. And he had to work a full-time job while making those videos every day and whatever. And then he said, live myself into the game. And he said luck. So he said luck. That means that he was maybe in the right place at the right time for people to find and subscribe to him. Yeah, pretty much. You got how many subscribers in? Um, I had like 138 in one week. So you had 138 subscribers in one week. Think about that. Most people, it's hard for them to get that. But once you start YouTube, you kind of keep up the momentum. It's crazy. Job, two videos every day, do something different, live myself into the game lot. So what happens in the future? I thought it was interesting how I kind of questioned how we, if it was something stable or not. With laws and regulations and copyright. I thought these things would hit uh, quicker. I really, I was so unsure whether it would even be allowed to monetize gameplay on YouTube. I think it's, it's one of those things where people really... That's true. Games don't need a marketing budget. So the cool part is that you don't have to pay for somebody to watch you. YouTube will use an algorithm and search terms, keywords, SEO, metadata to like match your videos with what a viewer would like in their algorithm. So instead of you having to pay for marketing, like if you were to market a celebrity like a musician, gaming is something you could get straight in like today because you don't really have to pay for anything to play a video game. You mean what? You buy a video game for 60 bucks, and if you're a gamer, you bought the game anyway. 
So it makes sense. Eh? There's no budget to it. You just buy the games that come out and you you film yourself playing them and review them. Put them online. Make reaction videos and make any type of content in between those new games. And that's it. You do one. But the copyright stuff is a big deal because I don't know. Copyright it's so weird on YouTube because it's like you can make a video that's completely yours and make no money on it because someone claimed it. And then you can make a video that is not original by nowhere imaginable that the video can be the most fucking worst reaction video, whatever. <laughs> I don't know, concoction you can think of that would be extremely out of the fair use realm. And they just, you won't get claimed for that, you'll make money on it. Because some reaction channels make more than people who actually make actual videos. That's crazy when you think about it. The, you're making more than off the person who made the video because you react to their video. That's crazy. They do need, I feel like they do need to separate reactions from original content. That way people know which one is the original video and yeah, yeah. But, but people can be recognized for their, for, for their work. work. Yeah. Now, what I do when I react to videos, I put the link in the description mm -hmm. and stuff. And then also I try to add something different to it by more talking. Because if you just sit there and watch it, it's just kind of like no one wants to just see your reaction. They want to hear your opinion too. Yeah. Yeah, so... That's the thing with copyright and laws, but I don't know if YouTube's gonna last too long if they don't fix that copyright striking shit. Like, <laughs> something stable. Really fought for, and, and to try and convince companies as well that it's benefit fitting for them. Like these big publishers, like EA, Bethesda, whatever, they benefit from people playing their game, and they them understanding that has really had a huge impact on. Uh, on YouTube and gaming, I, I can easily see it going another way where gaming would just not be allowed on YouTube. Sorry, so he was saying, okay, so would you? That's it? No. Why? <laughs> Good, you might. Okay, one, out. one more, one more. <laughs> I just want to hear it. <laughs> Vape Nation. <laughs> I'm sorry. I gotta get more juice for it. But yeah, is YouTube something stable? I I really don't. It's so weird because nothing really is stable. If you think about it, you go to college, you try to get a job. There's a possibility that you don't get the income that you deserve. And that's the same rate of pay. So think about it. You're still getting paid the same probably for 10 years plus. I mean, they may raise a couple of dollars on your wage, but other than that, you only earned about three to four on your wage, extra dollars, and you worked for them for 10 years. I think I would take my chances with something like YouTube or Lyft or any any other thing like where they don't give you a stable amount of money you can make. I feel like it's more stable in a way. I know this sounds crazy, but... Think about it. You get the same rate of pay at a regular job. They pay you $17 an hour all your life. Which one would you rather take? I don't know. Would you take uh, a job where you only get paid that same rate? Or would you take your chances? Now, I'd say you can work at that job plus taking your chances and starting your own thing as an entrepreneur if that's what you're into. But... I think um, for me, I would take my chances with something like YouTube or whatever, anything where you can make a, a income at a amount that you will never know. Of course, with YouTube, they don't give you a standard rate of pay. Like you don't know how much you're making. One day you can make thirty dollars. One day you made a hundred. But it, I think it's more stable than working for someone that gives you the same amount all your life because there's literally no room for improvement. Versus if you work a full-time job plus maybe doing something like this on the side, that could give you a better chance of being able to retire.
retire and get a house. Have just even some extra money to say. I say, I think the benefits of being an entrepreneur is kind of more stable than even if you got a good paying job, making a hundred thousand a year with. I don't know, being an engineer, I don't know, it's it's so weird, because we live in a different time, because you can make money so quick now, back then they didn't have Lyft, they didn't have technology where you Lyft drive, whatever you do, it's crazy how easy it is to actually make a dollar now, I don't know, it's crazy. And I, that's always been in the back of my head, you know, n and now in the future 2019 nothing's really changed It's article 13 all this stuff's happening. I think this is where Wall Street Journal happened I think it happened in February because it was literally on Valentine's Day <laughs> It was here. So this is a Wall Street Journal and then ba -ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba, Just been kind of stable for a long time and then Jesus Christ T-Series <laughs> But my favorite part of this graph is when I go, Hey guys, let's end the su subscribe PewDiePie meme. Like, we shouldn't do this anymore. Okay! <laughs> Skydive graph. <laughs> you know, this is the kind of reports you want to see. A full-on economic crash. That's Thank dope. you guys so much. I can't wait to hit 100 million subscribers in a couple of years. No one cares, Felix. Fine. You know what? This is just America. What if, like, in Afghanistan, I'm actually popular? Zero. What about Chad? What about Chad? God damn it, Chad. So, according to this uh, state of America, I am most popular in the state of Lova. What the frick is that? What the dumb name of. The fact that he said Lova. That's how you know he's from, not from America. He said Lova. That's Iowa. That's Iowa, Utah, Maine, Kansas, and Idaho. <laughs> Idaho. <laughs> the state. Lova? What? I am a hoe. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't. Do uh. you love so much? <laughs> Which country am I most popular in? Dragon! Yeah! The fact that you can see they him in the background of the mirror doing that. You can see him. Dragon! Yeah! <laughs> Thank you, Sweden. Very cool. T too bad you're such a tiny, insignificant country. Come on. I need. Imagine if I was the biggest one in India. Oh my god. This is so sad. I am so oppressed. If I was born in any other country, everything would be different. Norway. Come on. What is this? <laughs> Despite years of abuse, Norway's. Norwegian bros are still here. Thank you guys. Very good. <laughs> New Zealand. Australia. Estonia. What? What is this? Philippines is my second biggest country. Damn. Yeah. Filipinian bros. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So what are the most search related terms for PewDiePie? PewDiePie. Swedish YouTuber. I don't understand why people... I like how he acknowledges his audience. Like he's self-aware of letting them know, like, hey guys. So like that'd yeah, be pretty special if you like have an audience all over the world and you just look at your favorite the well the most popular countries that like you the most and you just like say them in your video and say, Hey, uh so and so is from this whatever. That's kinda cool. So he acknowledges his audience. That's cool make it all about me being Swedish. I never make my channel about being Swedish. Of course, T-Series number two. So this is what most people have searched in related to me. I think that's what it is. And then the third most related is my net worth. Sorry, Marx, yeah, you're not as important. My <laughs> second comes uh, fourth. My net worth, PewDiePie net worth. So basically what this means is that most people that search PewDiePie, search PewDiePie net worth. So really, in reality, what I should do is I should title this video PewDiePie net worth, and that will inevitably give me a lot of views based on search terms. Uh, according to this, I, I, my net worth is 20 million, 20 million dollars. It's more. I am sorry, but it's a bit more than that, Google.
I don't know exactly how net worth is men- uh, measured, but if it's he based on twenty million, he said. So he said the net worth is bigger than that. He's made more than twenty million, of course. Yeah. How much money on my bank account? Then I'm sorry, <laughs> you're coming a little short there, buddy. Oh, god damn it! It, it turns out I've already Before done the net. Begins. I've already done the net worth meme. <laughs> Marcia Bizognin, Italian internet personality. Let's look at how Marcia is doing. Oh, projection that it might go up. Well, that's good. Connecticut. Okay. Happy Wheels video game, guys. Happy Wheels video game. I can't believe that's the fifth highest. People always associate me with horror games, but I guess Happy Wheels is bigger. Markiplier! That's insane. So many people Google me and Markiplier. We barely done any videos together. We did this one. Has no one searched? There it is. Scare PewDiePie. Scare PewDiePie at 100 million. Let's get it, please. <laughs> All right, so let's compare to another YouTuber. What's a YouTuber doing well? Mr. Beast. Never mind. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait. Oh, okay. He's doing really well. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Australia and New Zealand. Do you do anything but watch YouTubers? Mr. Beast, Network, Networks, me, Mr. Beast, PewDiePie, PewDiePie. <laughs> How are the how are the Paul brothers doing? Look at this dude! Holy sh! Look how much bigger they were than me at some point. That's crazy. So Jake Paul has technically been bigger than I've ever been. Nani? All right, who's bigger than Logan and Jake Paul? Yeah. Holy sh! So the thing is, they were big, bigger than him at one point, but then they went straight back down to. Yeah. Exactly. So like. They were bigger than him at one like point. They were not that big for that long. Right. Whereas him has been a steady thing over time. Right? Yeah. It's crazy. Good. Holy fuck. Okay, so Logan is blue. Well, Logan Paul was big with that big giant spike. That's why he said holy fuck. Because that was the uh, suicide force thing. Oh, when wow. he filmed a dead body. Yeah. From the forest. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm red. Look, Look at, at Logan. Logan. Holy shit. That's nuts. So the the suicide forest was literally uh, four times as big as the PD5 versus T series stuff. That's nuts. That is crazy. Am I the only one interested by this? Okay, so we now know we are failing. But that doesn't mean we give up, god damn it. Subscribe, god damn it, I need a hundred million. There's another website that lets you look at statistics and analytics. Of course, Social Blade. I used to be obsessed with Social Blade, and I think a lot of YouTubers are. A lot of YouTubers go on Social Blade and they look at their own stats and they compare it to other people and they they frantically I think that makes a lot of people really, really depressed. <laughs> Why am I laughing? Gee, what's wrong with me? <laughs> it's just that Imagine that you have a job and how well you are performing in that job is 100% public and 100% comparable to all your peers. Like there's some deep psychological emotional stress that is always lingering for a lot of YouTubers. I literally have not gone on Social Blade in like four years. I, I just stopped. I don't know why what happened. After a while, it just luckily, it just ironically, it hit me. It doesn't matter. Like, I don't care how many subscribers I have. I, it doesn't matter. And I don't have- That's such a good mindset. Like, because when you compare yourself to others, it makes you kind of depressed. It makes yeah, you feel like you're not good enough or you can't get to a certain point. So. I think the better you just, if you're doing YouTube, it's best to just like don't even worry about the numbers and the money and stuff and just focus on actually just doing it. So, and then the money will come. That's how it works. It's like one of those things you really just got to put your faith in and your head in. And you just got to forget that you make money or you get subscribers or numbers from it. If you, as soon as you forget that and you treat it like, it's something you just do. This is what you do, and you stop focusing on the numbers, and st- you'll be surprised how well it do for you. Cause you, you'll be focused on actually being creative, and then just doing what you need instead of putting your energy to who did this, who posted that. Uh, but there's nothing wrong with using the analytics to your advantage. Like if you, let's say you look at your analytics every three months. Let's say you give yourself that time to look at your numbers every three months. 
to see, okay, how's it been going? Then you implement those numbers. But I feel like if you're looking there every day, it really does nothing for you. Um, it was another YouTuber that I knew that had like a million subs. And he just straight up said, like, when you stop focusing on the, the fact that you're gaining subs and the fact that you're getting numbers and you just make the content, you'll realize how big you get. It be, it's crazy. Um, I think you just gotta, it's one of those things you gotta just put your heart in. You can't, can't do all that extra stuff. I have to waste time just obsessing, obsessing about this stuff. But I do remember, I used to obsess about this stuff. And I think a lot of YouTubers do, especially comparing themselves. So my views are up. Yay! <laughs> My subscribers are <laughs> subscribe, please, please. Estimated monthly earnings. Yeah, seems about right. <laughs> I used to complain so much when I saw these estimated monthly earnings. Be like, that's ridiculous. How can I possibly make that much money? And then clearly, I have been very poorly monetizing my channel. Like. Before I would make four minute videos. You barely make any money on those. Like that's impossible. How can everyone make so much money? Oh, oh, I'm not monetizing my channel. Oh, okay, cool. Well, maybe that's a part of the reason. 21 billion views. That's fucking nuts, dude. Okay, so what I really want to investigate here is the top subscribers. Who's gaining the most subscribers right now? Okay. 300,000 in a day? Jesus Christ! Knowledge TV. <sighs> Teach me. Clearly, I need to become Indian. I'm beginning to see a pattern here. Okay, well that was analytics with PewDiePie. Hope you guys thought this was interesting. I've literally uploaded every single day for as long as I can remember. Taking minimum breaks as much as I can possibly take. Take. It's crazy to me how I still enjoy it. I don't get it either. Why am I here? It's fun. I don't know what to tell you. One thing that I am thinking about is like, I've never had a proper break. Like I never had a long break. He's you gotta think about this. He's 28, and he's been making videos since what, 22, something like that. Yeah, I think I think so. 21, yeah. 22 between that. And he's literally taking no breaks. That means something in his head had to shift. For him to like make him stay at home and just do what he had to do. I wonder what was that shift because that's a hard, that's a hard like change of lifestyle. I know his life was different before this, so it's like, but that's <laughs> hey, I, I, it paid off for him though. He made good money. He, he, I guess he just wanted to do something different and he didn't want to go to college or whatever. Yeah, it was. he wanted to do something different and. Turned out way better than he expected. I'm saying, because, like, that's the thing with a lot of YouTubers. It's scary. I see PewDiePie took this leap, and I think it's scary for most YouTubers because they're used to, like, especially in America, they're so used to yeah. telling you, like, you have to go this path or you're not going to make it. They just throw you in the next school after you graduate high school, and then a lot of people get out, and they don't know how to get started as an entrepreneur or whatever. So it's like, like nobody teaches them like at all. Like nobody's teaching them. Yeah, so it's like they they, they won't tell you that there's a different path for you. Yeah. Some of you are gonna like, be homeless, okay? Some of you are gonna make it. Mm -hmm. Some of you are gonna have a good paying job and some of you are gonna have all everything you need and you're gonna lose it all. Something's gonna happen, everyone's gonna go through something. You know, um, Everyone's got a lot of stuff going on. Some of you are going to make it. Some of you, and there's three types of people. You're either going to be a worker, you're going to be an entrepreneur, a boss, CEO. You know, it's you're going to be, it's, or you're just going to be homeless. Like, you're, gonna work, you're either going to work for somebody, you're going to be homeless, or you're going to work for yourself, or you're going to own a business. You know, it's four things, and it's like, they don't, they teach, they try to tell people they can only be a worker. Or you're not gonna be nothing, you know. Yeah, like they literally. And there's nothing wrong with being out, yeah. like certain jobs. There's nothing wrong like teachers, doctors, there's certain stuff. But like they're automating away a lot of stuff. Like he said, like we could be replaced by AI one day and stuff. 
make where I'm just a normal fucking person that isn't constantly thinking about YouTube. But literally, if I took a break, it would kill my channel. The way YouTube is shaped at this point is like you just have to keep making videos. Otherwise, there won't be anything to come back to. We've seen this happen to so many YouTubers that go on a break. And then, hey guys, what's up? Oh, everyone is gone. Oh no, they didn't leave. The algorithm made it. So, you know, that's always a fun lingering fact at the back of your mind. Being a YouTuber is such an easy job. You guys don't understand. It doesn't even matter. We're all going to be replaced by AI in the future. This has been PewDiePie Analytics. Subscribe, goddammit. Goodbye. What? You never played Tuber Simulator. Have you played the game? Uh, it's fun. I downloaded it, but I don't think I played it yet. It's cool. I like it. Super similar. Oh, I like how he's wearing cloak from Jack Tepta Guy and uh, Markiplier's brand. This has been PewDiePie Analytics. Subscribe, God damn it. Goodbye. What? I need ads like this. This is a perfect ad that he did. And he did it on his own videos. It's cool. You never played Tuber Simulator. <laughs> you know, it is fun, right? I'm not supposed to give my opinion. But give it a try, and then you can tell me if it's good or not. Not convinced yet? Okay. I'll cut you a deal. The game is available for free, and that's a great price. Free, and that's a great price. I like how smart that was, because I know he put like ads on the game and stuff. And put microtransactions probably. That's smart. That's smart. Yeah, that is smart. Yeah. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much. Make sure you subscribe to PewDiePie and uh, peace.